All right, so I put up a, a video of twitching a camel, my gelding that I work with every day, and it's super, super easy. Um, but I realize that um, there are a lot of camels that aren't very easy. This camel isn't used to being twitched. Um, when we do med them, they're always in the medding chute. We twitch them, twitch them causes them just to immobilize them. And if we need to take blood, we need to do anything. It's very, very quick. Um, and it just it's over with very quickly so before you before we twitch beautiful cleopatra yeah um from my many years ago in the horse world um twitch twitch was actually a device yes. that you clamp down on their lips it is very very tight and the first time i heard someone say twitch a camel i thought oh my gosh what and then i saw a man um who'd worked with the bedouins walk up and do the hand twitching you're going to demonstrate so in your words what for people that are horseback round and they hear the word twitch, what do you want to explain about twitching with a camel? It's the same principle, you know, of uh, pressing the lips, uh, endorphins to the brain, immobilizes them, relaxes them, but we don't use any tools. Um, and that's true when using horses. I mean, you'll actually have kind of these weird kind of pliers and you'll tie them on and it twitches and it stays on. Camels, all you need to do is just grab their lips. And what I want to show you is the position of my hands because that's really important. Um, always do it safely. Always have something in between you and the camel, especially with a camel that you don't know. And uh, let's see how this goes. I'm just going to move our food over for a little bit. So what? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good girl. He's a good camel. There you go. Okay. Oh, pretty. It's, okay. it's all right. It's okay. So the first moment she's like, what are you doing? And that makes sense. And, then, and I'm just holding it and I'm talking to her and showing this isn't bad. See where my hands are? We're twitching her. She's in the chute. Right now the vet can go in there and the vet can do everything he needs to do. Okay, I'm going to just pretend. I'm going to pull back. And okay. I'm like right here is that nice yeah, jugular vein. Girl. So I'm going to like just, girl. of course, this isn't a needle. Yeah. But, but the vet can get right in here and he can take blood, he can give and he can check her, go all the way around and she is twitched, she's not going to move. But some camels it's really hard to hold them, sometimes you know it's hard to grab them, but it's really really important she's to very learn relaxed. how to do this. So, so if I wanted to come back to here, outfit. if I wanted to come back here and do an exam or anything. You can do the whole thing. And no, so no, this no, is in lieu no, of I know, I know, sedation to immobilize, in yeah. lieu of making her lay down and, and physically her. Exactly. restraining her with ropes. Okay. One second. Now One the second. vocalization that she made right there at the beginning. I'm going to let her go now because I'm just holding her. Well, let's see. Okay. All right. You can hold her. Go ahead. Um, uh, the vocalization that she made at the beginning looked more, sounded kind of like, whoa, I'm surprised. Where did that come from? But now, you know, there's no, I mean, I'm reaching up. I'm doing an ear exam. She's not sure about that. Sorry, buddy. I'm going to touch her eyes a little bit. It's okay. Everything's okay. And you do need to talk to them and tell them it's okay. Now, I'm going to let go now. Okay. One, two, I get three. Three. We'll let go. Now, let's see if she's upset. If she's upset, she's not going to eat her grain. <laughs> oh, we went right back to the grain. So... This really is like a non, very, very low impact. It's good to have, to know how to do it, to know how to do it um, quickly and to have a shoot or like we have our pipe corrals, the camel can be on the other side of the pipe corrals. There'll be a way that we can kind of get their head out and they're tied. You don't want to do it to a camel that's not tied because they'll take off. You don't want to do it to a camel you don't know without anything in between you because it can jump up and down. You want to do it safely. What's the big difference too between um, the way females talk and act and the way geldings talk and act? Not bulls, but um, females that are unneutered, of course, and geldings. Yes. Um, Females have a lot more hormones. Uh, it's like when we do rides, usually we use the geldings for the rides. So the geldings, I mean, they're just more relaxed about everything. It's easier if you want to just go ahead and twitch them. It's very easy. The females have a lot to think about. And they're thinking about a bull coming and getting on them and putting them down and breeding them. So when you're holding the lips, they're thinking about stuff like that. So they'll be, um, they'll be more, more reactive. Oh, look at that. And See, now you're petting her face. And, and she I'm petting did... her face nice. just to let her know. And I'm going to have my hands on her lips and, and play with her a little bit. And it's, I'm just showing her that it's really no big deal. Can now, I ask you, too, for people yeah. that are coming, again, from the horse world. Yeah. The horse world seems to be a lot more like, if he doesn't like it, make him, you know, not make him. I'm not saying uh, abuse, but just do it and do it and do it and do it and then the horse will finally accept it. Mm -hmm. Is that the same with camels? No, that's a good question because um, camels don't have predators. Horses are prey animal. They have predators. It's a very, very different psychology with the horse. Working with them is very different. You can work with the horse and desensitize them. So doesn't want you to touch your leg. You just keep touching their leg, keep touching their leg and then they go, oh, you know, you're not a jaguar, you're not going to kill, kill me, I'm okay. 
Camels are so emotional. So if they're saying, don't touch my leg, and you keep going back to that leg, and keep going back to that leg, then it becomes personal. And then that camel's like, you're personally trying to upset me. And I've told you I don't, I don't want like this. it. I said I don't like it. You're not listening to me. And camels are really big on communication. Your communication is back and forth. So if I have that with a camel, I don't keep going back to the foot. I'll go to another foot and I'll pet them and I'll go around and I'll come back to this foot and touch it. And then I'll brush them over here. Um, and then I'll get to the leg and they'll be like, oh, it's fine. We're good. We've been talking, we're communicating, which oh. is more important to them than anything else and then they're good with you touching their leg. It's not about them being afraid of you touching their leg or doing something. It's about them communicating with you. So it's very different than horses. Wowzers.